Have you ever thought about creating a country? Most people don't, but a few people do. These people go on to create micro-nations, tiny nations that like to pretend they have power, but don't really have any. Nations such as Humanity, Lovely, Liberal Land, and Celestia are all examples of nations that are not recognized by any other state. The micronation we're going to be looking at today, Sealand, is different from the other micronations. Sealand is a military base located off of the coast of the UK, and unlike other micronations, it can be classified as an actual state. To become a country, you need four things. A population, defined borders, a government, and the ability to form relationships with other countries. This last one basically means that you have to have other countries recognize you as a country. So how did Sealand get recognized? Well, we have to look at the entire history of Sealand. It's the middle of World War II, and Germany is bombing England, the most vulnerable locations being small towns on the coast. England's solution was to build the Monsel Forts, small forts built a couple miles out from shore to spot and shoot down German planes. At the time, British territorial waters extended three nautical miles out from the shore. While most of the forts were built within the three nautical miles, some were built outside, technically making it illegal for them to be built in the first place. This will be important later. In 1956, the last full-time personnel left the forts, and they became decommissioned. It's now the 1960s, and British radio has a ton of restrictions on it. Trust me, guys, it will all come together. Basically, anything that was in the BBC was outlawed, and people started setting up their own radio stations right off the coast. These radio stations were called pirate radio stations, and people loved them. Roy Bates ran one of these stations called Radio Essex. Later, he renamed it to Britain's Better Radio Station. He ran it from one of the forts called Knock John. After the government discovered this, they went to court over the legality of Bates' occupation of the fort. Since Knock John was still within the territorial waters of Britain, Bates was kicked off of the fort. Roy Bates turned his eyes towards Ruff's Tower, which was outside of the territorial waters. After discussing it with his lawyers, Bates, his family, and several friends moved out to Ruff's Tower on Christmas of 1966. They claimed it as their own country, naming it Sealand, and raising their new flag. Once the British heard about this, they demolished the rest of the forts. The residents of Sion could actually see the demolition from where they lived. The demolition teams ended up sailing by Sion and threatening to blow them up too, and Roy Bates ended up shooting warning shots at them. Since Roy was still a British citizen, he was brought into court under the Firearms Act. After a lengthy argument about the legality of Sion, the court ruled that the British government had no control over Sion because it was beyond their territory. At this moment, the British government had recognized Sealand as its own country, therefore giving it all the requirements to become a nation. It's now 1978, and Roy Bates is now thinking about turning Sealand into a luxury hotel and casino. Alexander Ackenbach. Ackenbach? Achenbach. Achenbach. Alexander Aschenbach disagreed with Bates. Who is Aschenbach? Probably a business partner. Where did he come from? I don't really know. There wasn't a whole lot of information about him. He kind of just shows up out of nowhere. Aschenbach hired mercenaries to take over Sealand. They waited until Roy Bates left the island with his wife for England, and then they stormed the platform using boats, jet skis, and helicopters. They took Bates' son, Michael, hostage and locked him up in the jail. The jail in here? Ooh. Yep, it's only been used the once after the invasion where my father got taken hostage. Bates had a friend who was a stunt pilot who also had access to a helicopter. Using him, they flew back to Sealand, dropped back down on the platform, and got guns that were stored on the island. They then took the entire country, and not a single person was killed during the process. After that, they kicked Achenbach out of the country. After Achenbach was exiled from Sealand, he went on to create the Sealandic rebel government. It was based in Germany. In 1997, the Bates family realized that the Sealandic rebel government had been using the sales of fake Sealand passports to finance drug trafficking and money laundering between Russia and Iraq. 
Achenbach had been using Sealandic diplomatic immunity and Sealand license plates to get away with this. The Bates family had to recall nearly 4,000 passports over the last 22 years. In Hong Kong, passports were sold for nearly $1,000 each, and there were nearly 150,000 passports in circulation. Sealand still gets hundreds of requests for passports every day. So if we're talking about Sealand's legitimate business, they sell postage stamps. They also have their own currency. One Sealand dollar equals one US dollar. Plus, they have unique coins. They also had a company called Haven Co. It was a data haven founded on Sealand in 2000. A data haven is basically just a safe place to store information online. Haven Co. claimed that they had no restrictions on copyright or intellectual property because they were not part of WIPO or WIPO. I'm not sure I'm not European. So I, ju so I just looked it up. I made a mistake. WIPO is not European. It's members with 193 states. So the more you know. Haven Co. eventually went offline in 2008. In 2013, Sion came back with a new business plan. They started offering VPNs to the US and the EU. They also started storing encryption keys and other cold data. This next section of facts have no rhyme or reason. They were just fun facts that I thought were interesting and I thought I would share um, that I couldn't fit into the rest of the video. In 2008, Sealand hosted a national skateboarding competition. Not that national for Sealand is very big, but it was sponsored by Red Bull. In 2018, Richard Royal swam from Sealand to the coast in three and a half hours. He was then knighted by Prince Michael. And that's everything you guys need to know about Sealand. I'll see you guys next time. Yeah.